Tonight we continue our series of reports on the first 100 days of the Donald Trump administration. This evening, we're talking education. Senior correspondent Adam Housley tells us it is another area where the new president is raising either hopes or fears of big changes. K through 12, it sounds like he wants to treat it as a business model, which concerns me. Tell me about the robot coding. Christy and Jeff Johnson take advantage of a California law allowing them to send their two oldest kids to a performing arts school. It's a better fit for 15 year old Aiden and 17 year old Liam. But with 10 year old Haley attending a public elementary school and Christy, a special ed teacher, being employed by the local district, they wonder what kind of impact a Trump presidency will have on public school funding. If we want all students to succeed, we need to make sure that all students have those same resources. We want every child, every single child, low income, we don't care where they are, where they live, every child in America to be able to attend the public, private, charter, magnet, or religious school that is right for them. <laughs> choice. And that word choice is the backbone of President-elect Donald Trump's K-12 education agenda. In a September 8th speech outlining his school choice plan, Trump said his first budget will turn $20 billion of already existing federal dollars into block grants for states, with more money going to the ones with school choice programs in place. Each state will then decide how to distribute the money, which Trump said he would like to see go toward financial aid for kids living below the poverty line. From where exactly the existing money comes, isn't clear, but his commitment to making school choice an option nationwide is evident in his pick for education secretary. With Betsy at our side, I know we will make great strides in fixing our broken schools all over the country. It's time to make education great again in this country. Betsy DeVos, who is declining interviews ahead of the cabinet nomination process, is a billionaire, former Michigan GOP chair and school choice advocate, who also echoes the bring education local sentiment Trump championed throughout his campaign. The answer isn't bigger government. The answer is local control, it's listening to parents, and it's giving more choices. DeVos was never a teacher, but she did make the Michigan charter school movement her mission by supporting legislation redirecting public funds since the early 90s. There are nearly 400 charters in the state today, two-thirds of which are run by for-profit entities. Betsy DeVos is an ideologue. She believes that schooling should be a business. Teachers Union President Randy Weingarten cites data from the nation's report card, which shows Michigan charter schools score lower than their traditional public counterparts. It's not simply about whether there's charters or not. It's about do we hold all schools that get taxpayer money accountable and do those schools actually work for children? We cannot reform traditional public schools from within. Kevin Chavis is with a school choice group DeVos once chaired. So even though he supported Hillary Clinton, he liked Trump's model of creating competition. When traditional educators know that there's competition over there and that there's someone providing a good product and that parents warm up to that and embrace it, it makes a huge difference. I definitely agree with the idea of some options for kids going where they want to go and for funding to follow them. I just think that how it's implemented is really, really important. If you have competition and one is doing better than the other, you don't create an environment where the one public school goes out of business because it still needs to serve that community. The U.S. doesn't have a national standard for education. The Every Student Succeeds Act, signed by President Obama last year, puts that into the hands of the states by requiring each one to adopt some type of challenging standard. Forty-two states are using Common Core, a curriculum both Donald Trump and Betsy DeVos want to end. But that same law also prohibits the education secretary from influencing which kind the states adopt. And with Common Core already receiving no federal funding, its future during the Trump administration remains to be seen. Brett. Adam, thank you. There are just four reports left in our 15-part series looking ahead to the first 100 days of the Trump presidency. Tuesday, we focus on corporate taxes and bringing jobs back to America. Again, you can watch all parts of this series on our homepage, foxnews.com slash special report.